What is more important in, in a country like South Africa? What's the most important thing for you to do with this fund? Good morning, Matt and Anna. Um, you know, the difference between most emerging markets and the developed economies post-COVID pandemic has been the lack or limited fiscal and monetary um, room or space to move. And clearly the Fed has flooded the entire world with liquidity. So the issue here is not liquidity. It's essentially uh, firepower to support productive capacity and companies through this period of uncertainty before they can raise capital through the normal channels. Now, South Africa has a sophisticated financial market and an institutional savings pool. What we're trying to do is encourage the institutional savings pool to go where the problem is and not to take too long before companies are effectively zombified or productive capacity lost, which then turns the upswing into a weaker upswing uh, than anticipated. Hendrik, good morning. I, you, you mentioned there about the savings pool in South Africa. Is there room for international investors here? So if, if international investors believe there's a return to be made on the South African recovery story, should they get involved in this fund or is this just a domestic uh, uh, fund? We, all we're saying is it's the domestic asset pools or, or asset owners have an issue if they, if they uh, uh, do not support the productive capacity. So it's them first. There's no reason why uh, international investors cannot participate or uh, you know, invest in good companies appropriately. Um, one, of the, one of the problems there has been that the rules for capital raising are very strict, and therefore uh, it's, they've been relaxed through after some lobbying and discussion with the exchange only a few days ago, but that the normal capital raising process is slower than you would have seen in the UK or the US. I, I noticed the Financial Times reported over the weekend that almost 70 billion of, of, of new equity has been raised in the crisis in most of the developed markets already, which is small, but still much larger than you've seen in many emerging markets. What kind of companies are you looking to invest in here, Hendrik? I mean, are there any criteria? For example, is ESG involved? Matt, what we're seeing is, is or what we're trying to do is have an impact and a commercial return at the same time, but obviously address the kind of the pools of money would, would be interested in, 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 in ESG-type investments. Uh, but we have isolated, identified good companies we know well, which many of our, our asset owners actually have stakes in, but which are currently, and there's a lot of hope in this. You've seen it in the equity marks, a lot of hope about V-shaped recovery, about very quick uh, back to normal. We know that is not going to happen. We know that COVID-19 has had permanent impact and that the way out, particularly in the economies which didn't have the ability to stimulate fiscally, will take longer. And it's really those, uh, that need we want to address, but we don't want to go and put money into losers just to, to, to buy very expensive jobs. The economy also has to work. It has to be flexible, and we all understand that. But in the emerging markets, we don't have what you have in the U.K. and the U.S., where you essentially have guaranteed workers' incomes and allowed the business sector to restructure. There, there's no safety net. There's no safety net. And so perhaps this is more important, what you're doing here, Hendrik, more important in emerging markets than in developed markets because of a lack of other, uh, other measures in place. Does this, does this look like a model that could be used in other parts of the emerging world? We think that uh, actually that model is already at play in a place like China, but it's more driven by the state, but through the businesses where... You've clearly seen uh, Xi Jinping uh, declare jobs and productive capacity as number one prior or as the top priority uh, in the near term. So we think it could be, it could work, but where South Africa is quite unique, it has a well-functioning capital market, the pools of money are there, and you don't have to wait until the businesses are distressed. In America, the combination of distressed investment, but 
government uh, underwriting or government uh, uh, financing for people out of work is a different model. And we think, therefore, many markets, not just emerging markets, could think about this.